think I'm crooked. There you go. Thank you, my love. I appreciate you. Here we go. So, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And, what did we talk about last time? The typology of Antichrist. Ah. Yes, you remember that one? I do. The character of Judas perfectly summed up what the Antichrist would be like. Mm -hmm. Someone who seemed like a Christian insider, who seemed trusted with the riches of heaven, who seemed like they walked close with Jesus and yet was a betrayer, even with a kiss. Ah. Today we are going to be talking about the typology of 40. Sounds funny, doesn't it? Well, thank you for everything you do to help us with the Bible studies. Thank you. Let's see who's here. Oh, we have Cindy here, we have Mom here, and we have Krista here. I'm here. We're all here. Wow. Well, it seems like the crew is here, huh? <laughs> I hope everybody's doing good. Hello, Mama. Hello, Cindy. And hello, Krista. So, let's see. Maybe we should say a prayer and get started? Okay. Okay. Everybody knows my pretty lady. She's right here. She's just hiding. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to do another Bible study. It is Wednesday, and here we are with your word, and we ask in a simple way, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would show us what your word says typologically about 40, that you would bless us with your spirit in a double, triple, quadruple portion, and that you would protect us and speak through us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So last time we talked about the Antichrist in typology. And we looked at Nebuchadnezzar, we looked at the Pharaoh of the Exodus, and we saw different aspects of the Antichrist. But we specifically focused on Judas and how the character of Judas was, would be the character of the Antichrist. How uh, Judas was an insider in the Christian religion. He was the leader of the treasure of heaven. He walked with Christ, he healed, he cast out demons, and yet he betrayed Christ with a kiss. So to the Antichrist would seem like a Christian. He would seem as if he was a treasurer of heaven. He would seem as if he's casting out demons and such, but he's going to betray Christ with a kiss. Today we're going to talk about the end time typology of the number 40. And that sounds funny to say the uh, end time typology of the number 40, but it's really important especially for today in the world we live in. So let's get started. I wanted to say hello, Steve-o. Hello, everyone who is here. Let's get started with the Bible study. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Isaiah 46, verse 9 is one of the typological principles when studying typology. Now let's just look at two of the principles real quick, and then we'll move on. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. This is what the Lord says. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. There is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So the Lord tells us what the end is like by what happens in the beginning. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 says, Now all these things happened unto them. All the things happened unto those people in the Old Testament for examples, and they are written for our admonition, for our warning, upon whom the ends of the world have come. So today we're going to talk about the number 40 and the significance of the number 40 in the Bible and how God uses this number to teach us spiritual truths that can be applied in the end of time. This is very important to understand the spiritual truths found in the number 40 and how God uses this number to teach us things that can help us in the end of time. Often the number 40 is used by God to describe, to describe a time of judgment, a time of testing, a time of trial, a time of probation, a time of trouble, and a time of hardship. In the Bible, there's many times the number 40 is used, right? In Noah's day, it was 40 days and 40 nights of rain before the judgment came. After Moses had killed the Egyptian, he fled into the wilderness for 40 years. 
Moses intercedes for the people of God uh, for 40 days. The 12 spies spied out the land of Canaan for 40 days. Israel was punished for their unbelief as the spies did not believe that God was able to deliver the land. And they traveled through the wilderness for 40 years. Goliath speaks against the armies of God for 40 days as uh, David approaches the scenario. He is defeated, right? Typologically, these all mean something. Elijah runs from Jezebel and he travels for 40 days and for 40 nights into the mountain of Horeb. Jesus fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. After the resurrection, for 40 days, Jesus taught his disciples about preaching the gospel, the kingdom of God, and he prepared them to receive the Holy Spirit. Typologically, each one of these things has an importance. We're not going to talk about all of them. We're only going to talk about a few things. But the number 40 is seen throughout the Old and the New Testament. The number 40 is a very important number. And whether you see 40 days, whether you see 40 years, it always refers specifically to a transition, to a time of purification, to a time of preparation, to transformation to a time of testing, to a time of isolation. Because if you look, Jesus, isolated in the wilderness, Noah and his family, isolated on the boat, Elijah, Moses, isolated in the wilderness. It's a time of change. It's a time of challenge, which leads up to a time of judgment. So God uses the number 40 to emphasize spiritual truths, which we can apply to the end of time. It's very important that there are spiritual truths, there are spiritual truths in typology in the number 40. So let's check this out. A typological example of the coming judgment found in the days of Noah. Let's see what we can see in typology with the number 40 in the time of Noah. Genesis chapter 7, verses 11 and 12. Genesis chapter 7, 11 and 12. Here we go. I'm just getting there. I'm getting there. Genesis chapter 7, verses 11 and 12 says this. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Very important. 40 days and 40 nights. 40 is associated prior to the first judgment of the world. Genesis chapter 7, Genesis chapter 8, a time of judgment as God judges the world with water. There's another judgment coming where God judges the world with fire. Is 40 associated with that? Very important. This was a time of purification, right? The world was filled with sin. The thoughts of man was continually on sin and God purified the world from its sin with the flood. So this 40 represents a cleansing, a purification from sin and from evil. It was a time of transformation, right? This was a time when the old world passed away and the new world began. That's very important that during the time of Noah, he witnessed the transition from an old world to the new world. That's very important for us at the end of time. As we transition and we watch the world transition from an old world to a new world order, right? During the time of Noah, the diet was changed. During the time of Noah, lifespan decreased. During the time of Noah, the earth itself was transformed. So change, transformation, purification is all associated with this number 40, right? During the time of uh, Noah, the mountains, the rivers, the oceans, all the land was changed and reformed. Climate was different. It now rained. And a new world order was set into place. And 40 days is associated with the change. It's very important to see the typological example in the time of Noah, use that, flash forward to today. Same thing is going to happen. Matthew 24, 37. 
Matthew 24, 37 says this, But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be, as the days of Noah were. As 40 days is associated with a new world order in the time of Noah, so too 40 days will be associated with a new world order at the end of time. That's very important. Noah's time, 40 days, a time of transformation, God's judgments, isolation, purification, a time of testing, a time of irreversible change. There was no way that the change that took place after that 40 days could ever go back. And so too, it's going to be the same with us. The, the, the 40 days that took place with Noah was a time of transformation. It was a time of isolation, a time of purification, a time of testing, a time of change, a time of it could never go back to the way it was. So, too, it's going to be with us. The second typological example we have with the number 40 is with the Exodus. As God delivers his people out of bondage, right? Moses spent 40 years in the desert. Moses killed the Egyptian. He spent 40 years in the desert as a shepherd. This is very important that Moses goes from a prince of Egypt to a shepherd. And a time of preparation in the wilderness takes place before God calls Moses to deliver his people. A time of transition, a time of preparation from a prince to a shepherd. Acts chapter 7 verse 28. Acts chapter 7 verses 28 says this. Will thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Quoting the verse from Exodus. Then fled Moses at this saying, as a stranger in the land of Madian, wherein he begat two sons. And when the forty years were expired, and when the forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sion an angel of the Lord in the flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and he drew near to behold it. The voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the Lord thy God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and did not behold. Then said the Lord unto him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the ground wherein thou standest is holy. I have seen, I have seen the afflictions of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and am come down to deliver them. And now come. I will send you into Egypt. Prior to the deliverance of God's people at the Exodus was 40. Very important. Moses spent 40 years in preparation and transition from a prince to a shepherd, shepherding God's people right before the Exodus. This is a time which represents the end times, right? That's what the Exodus represents. At the end, 40 is a symbolic meaning of transition, of purification, of change. And as Moses spent 40 in the wilderness as a shepherd, which God used to deliver his people, and he delivered his people with plagues, so too the same thing is going to happen at the end time. A 40 is going to be associated prior to God delivering his people with plagues. This is what's going to happen at the end of time. This is a symbolic meaning. This 40 is a symbolic understanding of something that takes place. At the end, 40 is going to be associated with God's people being delivered with plagues. Israel spent 40 years in the desert, right? A journey to the promised land. So too we are on a journey to the promised land, right? Israel in the desert for 40 years was a time of purging the unfaithful people from the congregation. That's very important, that this 40 represents a purging, a purification. This was a time of preparation for God's people to live in Canaan, the promised land. This was a transition from Egypt to Canaan, right? 40 years of testing. That's what happened with the Israelites in the desert. It was 40 years of testing. It was 40 years of a time of challenge. They went through some challenging stuff. 
right? 40 years, a time of purification, 40 years, a time of transformation. When the children of Israel went into the desert for that 40, they came out a completely different people. So too, this is going to be the exact same thing that happens at the end time. God's people are going to enter a 40, and the, the unfaithful are not going to make it. They're going to be challenged. They're going to be purified. They're going to be purged. And when they come out of this 40, they're going to be transformed the same way that the children of Israel are. So this number 40 is associated with two end time parallels, right? The flood, a time of judgment, had a 40 prior to it taking place. The exodus, a time of God delivering his people. This is a, a, a foreshadow of the end time. This had a 40 preceding it, right? This 40 is very important. Both of these instances, the flood and the exodus, these reflect a time of God delivering his people. These both reflect a end time truth, which we can see in typology. And both of these events are preceded. Both of these events, right before they take place, are associated with the number 40. Right, A time of transition, a time of purification, a time of preparation, a time of transformation, a time of testing, a time of isolation, a time of change, a time of challenge, and a time of judgment. That's what this 40 represents. This is so important to grasp this spiritual truth. Right, The Bible study is called End Time Typology of the Number 40. This number 40 represents transition, it represents purification, it represents preparation, it represents transformation, a time of testing, a time of isolation, a time of change, a time of challenge, and a time of judgment. That's, all of these meanings are packed into the number 40. So when the Bible speaks of 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years, pay attention and look for the typological meaning behind what's being said, because all of these things are written for our admonition to whom the end of the world has come, right? Question, will there be a 40, question, will there be a 40 that is associated or that is precedes earth's final moments? Oh, that's a funny thing to ask right there. Will there be a 40 that precedes earth's final moments? Will there be a time of transition, a time of purification, a time of preparation, a time of transformation, a time of testing, and a time of isolation, a time of change, a time of challenge, a time of judgment. Yes, absolutely. COV-19, the quarantine. Now that sounds funny to say that, right? But this word quarantine literally means 40 days. That sounds funny. But if you go to Webster's 1828 Dictionary and you look up the word quarantine, I challenge you to do it. Look up quarantine, Webster's 1828. And this is what you're going to read. Webster's 1828, quarantine. Properly the space of 40 days. Appropriately the term of 40 days during which a ship arriving in a port suspected of being infected with a malignant contagious disease is obliged to forbear intercourse with the city. In law, a period of 40 days. So literally, literally the word quarantine means 40 days. And is not the, whole, the entire world, every country on the planet, is not the entire world in a quarantine, you can literally say the entire world is in a period of 40 days. Mind-boggling to understand the time that we are actually in. The Bible says that 40 represents transition. 40 represents purification, preparation, transformation, testing, isolation, change, challenge. Don't all of these words perfectly fit the time that we live in. We're in a time of transition. We're in a, a time of preparation. We're in a time of transformation. We're in a time of testing. 
We're in a time of isolation. We're in a time of change. We're in a time of challenge. The entire world is under quarantine. The entire world is in 40. Each one of these points is absolutely relevant for today, right? COV, COV-19 has brought a quarantine period or a 40-day on a worldwide scale. This 40 is now a worldwide scale. Yes, COV-19 and quarantine has lasted longer than 40 days. That's true. But this isn't this worldwide quarantine, this worldwide 40, this is not about the amount of days. It's about meaning. And I'll say that again. This COVID-19 and quarantine, which represents 40, this is not about the number of days. It's about meaning, right? God uses numbers and names to express meaning. And God specifically uses the number 40 to tell us trouble and hardship are here. It is very important. Hasn't quarantine, has not this worldwide quarantine been about transition, been about transformation, been about testing? It's been about isolation. It's been about challenge. It's been about change. It's been about preparation. It's been about purification, trouble, and hardship. So the quarantine it has not been about a number. It's been about what the number stands for. So important to understand that first off, we are preparing for a new world order, just like the days of Noah. Second, God's people are anti-typically preparing for the exodus. God's people are anti-typically preparing for the exodus. That's the second coming. And God has literally stopped the world. And he's named this time period quarantine, which means 40, the entire planet. Every country on the planet is in quarantine. Every country in the planet is in 40, right? And God has given his people time. He's given his people money without having to work. In this time period, there's many people out there who can make money and they don't have to work, right? There's a lot of people who are making more money in unemployment than they are working. So God has given us time. God has given us money. And God has given us the ability to research truth, right? That's what Google does. Google is the world's library. God has given us the ability to research truth, a world, a lifetime of truth, a world of truth in just a few moments. All of us have the ability to reach in our pocket. Even the poorest countries have the ability to reach in their pocket and research truth, a lifetime of truth, a world of truth in just a few moments, right? So God has literally given the entire world time, money, and ability to help them prepare for the coming time of trouble, right? We are in a 40. This quarantine means 40. And we are supposed to be preparing our hearts and minds for a time of trouble, which will transition into a new world order. And very few people are aware of what's taking place. This is absolutely what's going on right now. People sense it, right? They sense that this is going on, but they can't quite recognize it. They can't put their finger on it. We're in preparation time. We are absolutely in preparation time. End time typology says before judgment, before deliverance, 40 will take place. 40, a time of transition, a time of purification, a time of preparation, a time of transformation, a time of testing, a time of isolation, a time of change, a time of challenge, and a time of judgment. Every single one of these points, which symbolically the number 40 represents, because if you look at 40, every time 40 is used in the Bible, each one of these points is represented. There's a long list of 40s in the Bible. There's more than one witness. We are in a 40. There's more 40 typological examples that we can use for our understanding in the end of time. So let's talk about this. 40 
that 40 days, 40 years, the, the day and year, it doesn't matter. It's the, it's the meaning behind the number, right? And 40 precedes God's people receiving victory. Very important. 40 precedes or 40 goes ahead of God's people getting victory. Moses, Elijah, Jesus himself fasted in the desert for 40 days. This is very important. No food, no water. The ultimate test of faith. Are we going to go through this? Very important. During the 40-day fast, Moses proved his loyalty to God. During the 40 days, Elijah gained instruction on how to lead God's people. And during the 40, Jesus gained victory over Satan. That's very important typologically for us to understand what should be taking place for us as individuals during this time of 40. We should be preparing to prove our loyalty to God. We should be preparing on how to lead God's people. We should be preparing to receive victory over Satan. 40 also precedes the destruction of God's enemies, right? 40 went before the people of God in victory. 40 goes before the destruction of God's enemies, right? Goliath harassed the armies of God for 40 days. After 40 days, David comes and defeats Goliath. So 40 went before the enemy of God in the form of Goliath. 40 preceded Goliath's destruction. The Philistines had the children of Israel captive for 40 years until the deliverer Samson came and defeated the Philistines. So 40 went before the destruction of the Philistines. Satan lost to Jesus at the wilderness after 40 days of Jesus fasting in the wilderness. So Satan himself lost after 40. Goliath, the Philistines, Satan himself, all of God's enemies symbolically were defeated after 40. Moses gave the law after 40. Isaac married Rebekah at the age of 40. These are symbolic typological things that we can learn from. Will Christ receive his bride after a 40 time period. Typologically, these mean something. Typologically, we should investigate and look into these things, right? Satan appears after 40. This is end time understanding that we want to hold on to because we're in a time period of 40. And as we look into the scripture and we look to see what's going to happen after the 40, we can see that Satan appears after the 40. Matthew 4, verses 2 and 3. Matthew chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Here we go. Matthew chapter 4, verses 2 and 3 says this. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, talking about Jesus. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was after hungry. And when the tempter, that's Satan. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. So Satan appears on the earth after 40. Typologically, that is very important. The image of the beast takes place after 40. Typologically, this is, this is crazy. Exodus 24, 18. Exodus 24, here we go, here we go. Exodus 24, 18. Exodus 24, 18 says this, And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mountain. And Moses was in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. So here, here's a 40, that Moses goes into the mountain of God to do sanctuary work for 40 days. Exodus 32. Now Moses is in the mountain for 40 days. Exodus 32. 
And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, talking about 40 days, the 40 days had passed now. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, the people gathered themselves unto Aaron and said to him, Make us gods which shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man which hath brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the gold earrings which you have in your ears of your wives, of your sons, of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and he fashioned it with a graving tool, and he made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. The image of the beast is made after 40. We can learn typologically what the future is going to bring. After this time of 40, which we're in right now, Satan is going to appear. The image of the beast is going to appear. Jesus is going to come back the second time. A lot of stuff we can learn typologically from the number 40. Right? Jesus equips and trains his people to preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit during a time of 40. That's typologically, that's very, very, very important. That during a time period of 40, Jesus equips his disciples to preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verses 38. Is Jesus right now equipping his people to preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit at the latter rain. Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Here we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, after his resurrection, and many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days. So here, Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. And after the resurrection, Jesus showed himself for 40 days. What did he do? To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible truths, being seen of them 40 days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, You have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from here. And when therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, when wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses both unto me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the world. This is very important to understand typologically, that during the 40, not after the 40, it's, this is not something that takes place after the 40. A lot of those other things took place after the 40. This was during the 40 that Jesus was preparing his disciples to preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit. That's what's happening right now typologically. Jesus is preparing his disciples to preach the gospel and to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Very, very important that this number 40 is very important biblically. The number 40 is about transition. It's about change. It's about purification. It's about transformation. It's about preparation. It's about testing. It's about isolation. It's about challenge. It's about change. It's about irreversible change. Things are not going back to the way that they were before COVID-19 took place. This quarantine, this worldwide quarantine, is a worldwide 40. We got to remember that 
after the 40, God's people get victory. That after the 40, God's enemies are destroyed. 40 is a time of transition from the old world to the new world order. And typologically, the end time judgment and the deliverance of God's people is associated with 40. Satan comes after 40. Jesus trains and equips his disciples to preach the gospel and receive the Holy Spirit during, during, during the 40. That's so important that Jesus equips, trains his disciples to preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit during the 40. And the image of the beast is made after the 40. We are in a worldwide 40. There's no doubt about it. We are in a worldwide 40. And just like the days of Noah, when the rain fell, the latter rain, a new world order takes place. Matthew 24, 37. Matthew 24, 37. This is what it says now. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Just like the days of Noah, a new world order is coming. A new world order is absolutely coming. Are we taking advantage of this preparation time? We should absolutely be taking advantage of this preparation time. Are we preparing our hearts and minds to be purified? Are we preparing our hearts and minds to preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit? Are we taking advantage of the time God is giving us, right? A time to be challenged, a time to be tested, a time to be changed. Transition is coming on a worldwide scale. Transition is coming on a worldwide scale. Judgment is coming on a worldwide scale. The 40 is here. The 40 is here on a worldwide scale. Do we recognize the very special time that we're in? A time for Jesus to equip us with the Holy Spirit, to transform us with the Holy Spirit, to lead us out in the preaching of the gospel with the Holy Spirit. It's a time to get ready for the new world order. It's a time to get ready to reject Satan when he appears after the 40. Very important. We This is the time of preparation. This is the time of testing. This is the time of change. Bible typology is different than prophecy, right? In a sense, prophecy tells us of specific events that are to take place, whereas typology tells us how the events happen and the circumstances that surround them. Typology of the number 40. We just saw that the typology of the number 40 is a time of transition. It's a time of purification. It's a time of preparation. It's a time of transformation. It's a time of testing. It's a time of isolation. It's a time of change. It's a time of challenge. It's a time of judgment. Each one of these points perfectly fits with the world we live in today. As the world is in quarantine, which literally means 40, we are in a time of preparation before the new world order comes, before Satan comes, before the image of the beast comes. And we are to prepare our hearts and minds to preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit. The very essence of COV 19 quarantine is 40 and the bible is clear the bible is very clear the bible is calling us to wake up to the times just ahead of us this is a true statement the bible says now is the time of preparation for god's people to get ready for what is coming only jesus can prepare us after the resurrection he was there for 40 days preparing the disciples to preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus can prepare us to re preach the gospel and to receive the Holy Spirit. This quarantine 40 is a time of change. 
It's not going back. Irreversible change. Time of testing. Time of isolation. Time of transformation. A time of challenge and a time of change. We have the advantage of knowing it and seeing it and asking God for help. Let us ask God for help as we recognize the end time typological understanding of 40 and that we could possibly be in the middle of it. This is not a time to play games anymore. It's a time to prepare our hearts and minds to reject the mark of the beast, to reject Satan as he pretends to be Christ at a false second coming. It's time to reject the Antichrist, and it's time to get right with God through the scriptures as we reject the wine of Babylon. Take this Bible study. Use it to your advantage. Allow Jesus to prepare you, to give you the Holy Spirit, to change your character, to prepare you for heaven. And as we get ready, let us decide in our mind now that it's better to die than sin against God. There's no more time for playing church. It's time to get ready. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for the typological understanding of the number 40. It's deep thoughts, Lord. It's, just, it's, it's not scary thoughts. It's sobering thoughts, Lord, as we understand that we are in the middle of a time of preparation, transition, and change that's never going back to the way it was. So, Heavenly Father, give us the courage to face the times ahead of us. We don't have the strength. We don't have the understanding, but you do. So, Heavenly Father, help us to submit to your word and bless us with the spirit, your spirit, your mind, the mind, the life, the righteousness of Christ, that we may move forward boldly in the time ahead of us, that we may preach the gospel, that we may live in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit and help us, Heavenly Father, to do your will. We don't have it in us. We're desperate for you. So, Heavenly Father, as this time of 40 is going on, hold back the winds of strife. Keep us, Heavenly Father. Prepare us and help us to do your will. Seal us, for the time is coming to an end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you, everybody. <clears throat>